Okay. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, welcome back to uh, uh, the Knowledge Trailblazer, uh, where we look for interesting civil engineering related topics or just interesting topic to share with you, uh, the audience. Please uh, like this video, so give us a thumbs up, uh, subscribe down below, and turn on the notifications so that uh, you always get the latest videos as and when we put them out. Um, again, uh, uh, we are continuing with this uh, series uh, of uh, Civiltronics. We've chatted to uh, Mr. Andre Brookman a few times before already. Uh, with a lot of uh, you know interesting and exciting things around his space in terms of engineering 4.0. Uh, and yes, uh, Civiltronics. And um, obviously, as we as we indicated, he's from the University of Pretoria, uh, where they've just recently built the uh, I think you call it the engineering 4.0 faculty or facility. Uh, it's quite a big facility, I must say. You know, we've obviously showcased it in in, in the last video, and uh, a lot of exciting things going on, on around that space. And I think then today we we're going to be looking uh, looking at the topic of uh, uh, rail engineering and what's happening within that space. So Andre, can you just uh, uh, take us briefly through what are you guys busy doing on the rail engineering? Uh, with the uh, Civiltronics. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Taki. So we're actually inside the Engineering 4 facility once again. Uh, this section of the lab will soon become the timber section of the laboratory with the uh, York chair in, in structural timbers that we've recently signed. So also exciting in that space. Right behind me is, is our pride and joy of the Railway Engineering Group. So as I mentioned before, I'm doing my PhD in railway engineering under the okay. supervision of Prof. Anas Graube. So we have the chain railway engineering, about yeah. six to eight students, normally postgraduate students, a mix of masters and PhD students. Um, and we also do a few industry courses. Uh, despite COVID, we're also continuing online, at least in that space. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is uh, sort of, uh, the, the idea behind the vehicle that you see behind me is called the Road Rail Vehicle. And this is part of our new NRF funded project in collaboration with the mechanical department and industrial as well. They'll also be utilizing the vehicle. And this is a very unique vehicle in the sense that if you look carefully, it's a bit difficult to see in the video. It's got a, a special undercarriage, basically okay. two rail axles. It can actually Ooh. lift the vehicle onto the two wheels. So we drive onto a straight section of track at a level crossing. We activate the hydraulics system and it actually drives on the little rail wheel so then it becomes a road rail vehicle so effectively a hybrid system the engine drives okay. the axle wheels and we can traverse yeah. the the railway line so this whole project and idea it aligns with engineering four addressing the challenges and the research projects associated with the fourth industrial revolution so yeah. we're adding a whole host of uh, components and sensors and really state-of-the-art uh, equipment to this vehicle this ranges from RTK GPS or rather I believe it's DGS so it's a single contained system from 200 hertz feedback frequency to knowing where you are within a few millimeters uh, in space we're adding optical systems to the front of the vehicle 360 degree cameras lidar laser scanners to the mm. rail profile you can also scan the road surface again it's a road vehicle as well so we okay. can use it for road okay. engineering yeah. And this aligns with my own PhD project on rail condition monitoring. So I want to put cameras in front of the vehicle and we want to do what we call photogrammetry. So we take uh, yeah. lots of photos as we go along the track. We figure out where those cameras are in space and we reconstruct this three-dimensional geometry. Mm. And that's why I use artificial intelligence. It's quite a bit better yeah. than normal standard algorithms, especially for reflective materials associated with rail components. So that's yeah. the focus of my project. So how can we use these new technologies in ways that we've never thought of before? It's not really adapted mm. to rail. So that's the, the area of research I'm trying to spearhead um, using a tool such as this, which is yeah, a fantastic opportunity. Quite, quite interesting. So in, in a sense, you've got a, a mobile uh, um, testing lab. Laborat in yeah, mobile yeah. laboratory. So and uh, it's been used quite a bit as well for some other commercial projects. Uh, okay. We've taken it out for quite a number of runs. We are just installing the final bits in terms of the power supplies and accelerometers. One of our master students is already working on this project. Um, and soon the cameras will arrive and then I'll I'll be a very happy student to, to play I around with the new yeah. technology. Yeah. yeah. Okay, interesting. So, so obviously, you know, there's a whole range of different uh, um, uh, tests and uh, scans that you can do with the, with this equipment. Uh, it's, it's a, as you said, you know, it's it's a it's a mobile laboratory. Uh, you're putting on as, as many sensors as you can. So, I'm not sure it must be quite a quite a uh, a nice pricey uh, piece of equipment at the back there. 
Yeah, so we've been very fortunate. It's actually in yeah. our F funded projects, our yeah. National uh, Research Foundation. And again, we're working with the mechanical and industrial uh, departments. Yeah. So this funding that has been made available to us uh, is being used to to buy the equipment that we really need mm. to, to address the objectives of these research projects. Yeah. Um, and it's really state of the art uh, equipment and like yeah. I mentioned, cameras ground penetrating radar, uh, power systems. Mm. Uh, it's a new vehicle in and of itself. It uses a very advanced types of hydraulically driven yeah. uh, system to propel the vehicle along the track. So everything is is new and hopefully we'll, mm. we'll be using it for many years to come still. Yeah, definitely, um, definitely. Yeah. So in a, in a sense, when I'm looking at uh, the ground penetrating radar and all of that, so as you skimming over the top of the rail, you are assessing the condition of the rail, looking at the substructure, as deep as you can so you can, I mean, if looking at specific failures you can pick up you know reasons for the failure itself so, yes so and again now we have uh, complementary technologies we have optical systems so we can combine that uh, with the ground penetrating radar we know exactly where those measurements were taken using the sophisticated gps systems and yeah. now we're also plugging in the artificial intelligent but to say but if we have these large sets of data and we can yeah. measure all these data points accurately can we not yeah. develop AI systems that we can place onto other less sophisticated vehicles to do the same thing that doesn't have this whole suite of sensors and okay. tech? Okay. Yeah. So, so you're looking at for, for like a specific component to 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 um, uh, to study. You can then get that specific equipment, stick it on a, on a like I said, a less less pricey vehicle, and then maybe even a normal train if you want to maybe a constant monitoring of, of track with train, whatever it may be. So it's quite, yes, quite interesting, it's, uh, you know, applications. It's, it's digitized rail operations. Yeah. That's I think that sums it up quite nicely. Yeah. Um, obviously now, if if I may, can just touch on your your th your thesis that you're doing your your doctor's uh, doctor on, uh, that being condition assessment. Uh, with the equipment that you have, to what to what level of accuracy can you um, achieve the conditional analysis, and what type of conditional analysis are you able to do? If we can just maybe touch on that. Mm. So for my project specifically, I uh, played around quite a bit with photogrammetry in the past and, and that's why I'm also emphasizing on that. But also we have a very unique opportunity now of computers being uh, powerful enough with uh, new mm. graphical uh, processing capabilities. So I'm actually, before I even work on this vehicle, I've already established the baseline using synthetic data as we call it. So everything yeah. has been rendered out on a computer with perfect accuracy and I can use that to train the neural network so long while we wait for for this vehicle actually to, to come along. But based off of just the theoretical results, you're looking at sub-millimeter measurements in terms of mm. your railway geometry. Oh. So I'm specifically focusing on the vertical geometry, but we're yeah. also identifying key areas on what we need to make it successful. So for example, the GPS, we know the type of accuracy that we need to successfully reconstruct the photographs that we, we want to take along the track. Or if we have accurate enough GPS, you already know exactly where those uh, photographs were, were already taken. So it's a bit of a mix of computer science and also computer vision quite a bit. So the computer has been running now for four months generating quite a big data set for me. Okay. Um, and again, it's it's a nice mix between uh, digitized technology, but still not leaving behind the, the, the footwork that you need to do. At the end of the day, we need these vehicles. It's physical infrastructure. We can create digital twins, but we still need a vehicle to go out and actually do all of those yeah. measurements. So I'm hoping to, yeah. to marry these two uh, early next year. So yeah. the digital numerical version is nearly done. And as soon as you the can cameras calibrate arrive, it with the real life um, model yes. as well. Yeah, and we have we fortunately enough uh, we have the the, sh the only the single uh, forty ton rail line in South Africa. It's a whole thirty meters long. It's situated yeah. eight hundred meters to the north here on the campus. So I can go onto that railway track any time of day. Yeah. I can do during test during the night as well. I can grind down the rail. It's currently rusted or if it's uh, nice and shiny. So I can do all these sensitivity analysis using the infrastructure that we have, and then later yeah. on deploy it fully on this vehicle, which is a bit more of a, a logistical scale to actually make the arrangements to go onto a live track. So there's yeah. there's various facets that I'm defining it into, leveraging the technologies that I have available. With COVID, I yeah. could do all the simulations at home. I've been unaffected yeah. largely in terms of research progress. So it's it's making my life a lot easier. I can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, then obviously, no. Look, I think with with all this type of you know you know millimeter by millimeter uh, um, accuracy, I'm I'm quite amazed. Uh, now I take it obviously you know, with that uh, tied it up together with GPS, you're able to to pinpoint where exactly your failures are. 
you can then you know then focus your maintenance within those specific areas so it's quite quite interesting and then i take it now uh, uh, obviously you know, together with the conditional analysis uh, could you then then use the same data to then then simulate uh, the rail within virtual reality and again maybe from a, from a medium term to long term point of view you could maybe just you know same thing with the virtual reality uh, run a simulation for you know over a period of 15 years 20 years and then actually pick up any major failures um, that that you could maybe put something in place right now to to mitigate against that. And I think together with your ground radar, uh, take into account your geo geotechnical condition. Um, what's the possibility around that space? Um, are we able to do something like that? Or yes, so uh, that's actually quite a, a condensed question, and I, yes, I think yes. you've touched on quite a few <laughs> facets. So if you're talking about virtual reality and simulation, yeah. I think we're moving towards, again, a space of marrying between the two. We can simulate the degradation using numerical models. Computers are significantly faster to do that. We yeah. can translate that into a photorealistic environment to do these renderings, for example, and train AI networks and agents to, to make these predictions for you and then do a sort of a cost uh, analysis on that. But that still doesn't replace the physical aspect. Sometimes you physically can't simulate the, the, the environments or the effects that you necessarily need. And that's where we touched on the last episode, accelerated pavement testing, uh, yeah. the track that we have here at the university. But we're also in advanced staging uh, planning of introducing a, what we call a rail loop at the Hillcrest campus. Yeah. So there's quite a bit of space left uh, on the campus to develop. Okay. We, we're proposing a figure eight loop as we call it so almost like infinity symbol just on its yeah. side so we can take this road rail vehicle and we can run it continuously along this mm. track which measures okay. approximately 2.1 or 2.3 kilometers in length we can yeah. do accelerated testing on there if you want to remove sleepers or um, make the ground softer or test different types Quite of different scenarios materials if you want to take a polystyrene pedestrian and chuck it in front of the RRV and see if your AI systems are smart enough to stop the vehicle, level yeah. crossings, uh, condition monitoring, working with industry mm -hmm. to test uh, various components, uh, both local and international. So if you want to say 3D print certain components, let's, let's come and out at a safe space where these things can be tested. The, this proposed rail loop will also be linked to the national rail network, which uh, passes just past the university. So it's it's part of the integrated planning that we're doing both yeah. with uh, private industry, uh, with the research needs that we have, and then the unique facilities that we have at Engineering 4 with this railway track, with the RRV and the different departments. We can make something really special out of that to to address yeah. industry needs and to do it in a cost-effective way and and really develop that that knowledge and expertise locally in South Africa, which which is yeah. something we can stand to be proud of. Yeah. Again, like I mentioned in previous videos, that you know, uh, South Africans uh, being very innovative, uh, uh, that continues that culture of that you know innovation within us, and uh, you know I, I like that. Um, mm. Just may, maybe look, I, I think you also pointed out uh, some some interesting uh, aspects. In, in terms of you know you, you give the explanation of a, a styrofoam uh, human that you throw in front of the of the train, and uh, I, I know one thing that has uh, sometimes plagued South Africa quite quite a bit is the uh, you know your accidents that you normally get at the rail crossings. You know we got you know unfortunate fatalities, uh, and people trying to you know jump the train sometimes. Um, would you then be able to maybe build something around that where you can? I know it's maybe impossible to stop to stop a train you know that's, that's moving at speed. Uh, but um, would there be any potential around that space to maybe improve uh, rail safety? Um, I think they, they can be. If you now consider things like uh, the drone uh, flights that we did during the last episode, and we talked a little about about uh, monitoring the traffic thereof. Um, if you can have a continuous monitoring system and at least some yeah. level of intelligence to identify a dangerous situation, uh, yeah. which you may not be able to prevent in and of itself, but if you can give advanced warning, if you can have these small mm -hmm. little embedded sensors that can run for years and pick up when there's human footsteps when a train mm -hmm. is close by, that little device can alert the, the central uh, management some software. Someone, yeah. Let us know, listen, something's wrong, send a drone out, maybe in the future we'll have very fast drones, go and have a look what's mm -hmm. happening there or have a little camera in the shape of a clippy or little rock sitting there, uh, keeping yeah. an eye on what's going on. So maybe maybe that's the route to follow. I 
know there's international projects that we've seen in terms of fiber optics that they glue to the side of the rail. Apparently, yeah. you can pick up or detect human footsteps. So if there's human footsteps where they shouldn't be and the train is near in the vicinity and you know that corridor needs to be closed off, at least you have some measure of advanced warning for, for something that might be potentially fatal or dangerous yeah. um, for, for the public. Yeah. I guess, look, the, the, the potential is there. It's just a matter of us then just maybe thinking about it a bit. And just, uh, again, you know, there's, there's quite a lot of, uh, you know, technologies that's out there. I mean, you've got your clipping system, you've got, you know, obviously your vehicle at the back, and plus there's a lot of things out in the market. So anything anything is possible in a sense. Mm. Um, okay. Um, I think then, uh, uh, I know there's, there's uh, quite a lot that we can talk uh, talk around this. Uh, let me also then, I think maybe if I can touch on, touch on one, uh, one last aspect, uh, maybe I might be repeating myself. But uh, future plans for the RRV, uh, long term, maybe just a final thoughts on that? Um, I think we're potentially looking also with uh, industry partnerships. I mean, it's it's good if we can get the, the road rail uh, vehicle up and running, just going around in a loop. But if you can have it uh, exploring different situations, different projects that, that uh, might be of use, we can also involve students again on those projects. Uh, if it's something related to, to condition monitoring or, or repair work, I think we can have a bi-directional conversation and, and knowledge channel to, to exchange some ideas on that. And that might lead to um, new research projects and participation for us as well. Um, if you think about AI, if you can record the entire rail length that the vehicle needs to travel to get to a particular point, we can also benefit quite tremendously uh, from that data because it's extremely hard to, yeah. to get data. It mostly does not exist in the form that we needed to, to develop yeah. these AI networks. And it's mostly been confined yeah. to vehicles or pedestrians or security cameras, but rail yeah. is still a very niche area in, in that aspect. Um, and again, like with my partnership with Fortal in Australia, I think that's that's already a, a good strategic partnership where they're advancing digitized rail. They're all about the dump track smart train approach. So you're putting all yeah. the intelligence on the train. Um, you, you have your vision systems, you have your condition monitoring systems all built into one. If we have the facilities and the capacity available that might not exist elsewhere, they can develop their AI system, which they are excelling at in terms of uh, providing industry products that's approved in terms of the safety measures and guidelines that it needs to operate at. We can also come and test it over at these facilities and we can develop yeah. and improve that. And then, and then it's a shared knowledge base. Yeah. The potential is out there, and you know, there's a lot that can be can, can be learned. So again, uh, like we said in the, in the past, guys, uh, knowledge trailblazer. We're here to share, try and share as much as we can, and look for these unique uh, you know gems that that we can share. Uh, thank you, thank you, Andre. Uh, thank you for for coming back. Uh, we hope to see you again uh, in in future uh, yeah, around you. other uh, fields of uh, engineering, or hopefully maybe something around concrete or something like that. But, but yeah, yeah no, we'll, we'll, we'll chat offline and we'll look and see, see what else we can try and package. But yes, I think Siltronics, definitely, you know, a, 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 a thing of the future. Uh, we are here. We need to embrace it. And a, a lot of the trail. Yes, exactly, exactly. We are blazing the trail. Um, so guys, uh, thank you for joining us, us again today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did and, and learning, uh, you know, from, from, from Andre, you know, all the unique things that they are you know, busy with. So again, I mean, if you've got any comments around the, the video of today, please uh, comment down down below. Uh, if you want to see anything else around Civiltronics, uh, we can then chat to Andre and then see what else we can put it, uh, put around that or just any other topics that you want. Uh, I know, Andre, you've put up a few papers on thing on your on your research as well. So there's mm -hmm. there's articles, I think, in the SICE magazine. And there's also yes. on LinkedIn. So I yes, think maybe LinkedIn if, and research guide, yeah. yeah. If we can maybe get the links from you, then I think what we'll do, we'll put it in the comments down below. So whoever's interested can just go, ha go there and have a look and then just read up on it. So guys, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, please uh, like this video. Uh, you know, subscribe uh, down below. Turn on the notification uh, so that you will get all the latest videos as and when we put them out. Thank you guys once again. See you until next time. Thanks, Bye. Thank you.